Thank you everyone for the very good and substantive questions today. I don't call an activist. Chanel. Thank you, Kaylee. Contrary to the court of media opinion, there is real-time data showing vast irregularities in the voting system that we have watched over the last few weeks. I asked this question of the campaign, and I asked this of you now, the White House. Where is our FBI in this entire scheme? Are they looking at any of the evidence that this White House or the campaign have presented in terms of real-time data evidence of voter irregularity? Where is the FBI? Yeah, um, you know, I would refer you to the FBI um, on that, um, to the DOJ on that. Um, there's spoken with the FBI in the last three weeks? Not that I'm aware of. Um, but look, I would say that there are real questions on mass mail out voting. We have put those questions forward. Um, and uh, we've said this for the better part of a year. There was a bipartisan commission uh, that talked about and identified the real potential for fraud uh, with mass mail and voting. Also, um, something that I would note is just we talked a lot about transfer of power in the election. And it's worth remembering um, that this president was never given an orderly transition of power. Um, his presidency was never accepted. Um, in fact, before uh, the election, his election, we know Crossfire Hurricane was launched by Peter Strzok to pursue a baseless allegations about the president's ties with Russia. Uh, that's before he was president, trying to subvert the will of the American people. We know in August, Peter Strzok wrote a text message about an insurance policy against a Trump presidency, once again trying to silence the voice of the American people. Um, in 2016, we know in October that there was a FISA warrant, a FISA warrant taken out to spy on the Trump campaign. And then the American people spoke, and they spoke commandingly in electing President Trump, despite all of the odds. And what happened after he was elected? You had 70 lawmakers say, we're not coming to his inauguration, Democratic lawmakers. You had Elizabeth Warren saying, we're going to attempt to obstruct the Trump transition by urging the Government Accountability Office to investigate uh, the incoming Trump transition. Um, in January of that year, you had President Obama have a by-the-book meeting where they talked about the Logan Act, using that act to go after Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. Just before the inauguration, you had BuzzFeed promoting and publishing this bogus steel dossier that's been widely debunked. And then for two years, you had the basis Mueller investigation, which searched for collusion, found none, and exonerated President Trump. While in 2016, President Trump became the duly elected president, many sought to undermine him, discredit him, delegitimize him, and deny his victory. There were no calls for unity. There were no calls for healing. So while every legal vote is counted, let us not forget the inexcusable transition or lack thereof that President Trump had to endure in 2016 and for years into his presidency. Thank you, everyone, for the very good and substantive questions today. I don't call an activist. I'm not an activist.